Okay, I'm just going to go through the second part of this run through of the October 2024 exam for Unit 4, which a lot of you have been asking about. So, this is um, for further mechanics, fields, and particles, and uh, it's for the International Edexcel A level. Okay, so I, I did warn you that I may have made a mistake in the last multiple choice question. I went and checked, and sure enough, I have missed a factor of 2 in question 10. Okay, so the answer should not be D, but it should be C. Okay, so it's not D, it's C. And you'll see this, this is the number 2, um, which is... Uh, needs to, we need to divide this by 2 again. So if you divide this by 2 again, you will go to C. Now, why do we need to divide by 2 again? Because it says which here, it says which of the following expressions give the maximum mass, yeah, from this equation. So you're still using the same equation in kilograms of the antiparticle produced, whereas D would be uh, the mass of both particles, yes? Because we doubled up the energy initially, because there were two uh, particles that collided. We doubled it up over here. We now need to halve it because we're only interested in the antiparticles, so the answer is C, not D. I apologize for that mistake. In section B, straight into it, it says in 2021, scientists identified a particle that sounds like a meta rasu, okay, the second most energetic cosmic ray particle ever detected on Earth, and it has an energy in electron volts of 2.4 times 10 to the 20 electron volts. And a newspaper article stated that this energy was equivalent to dropping a brick from waist height. Okay, uh, you've got to deduce whether this the newspaper article was correct. Yeah, well, to work out how much energy uh, is equivalent to dropping the brick from waist height, they've given you information and they want you to see well how much energy would. Yeah. Uh, be uh, released in terms of kinetic energy if you dropped um, a brick. So they're giving you the mass of the brick and the waste. And if you do that correctly, you're just basically using the GCSE equation mg delta h, put the values in that they've given you, we know g, you'll get to 30.2 joules to three significant figures. Yeah or 30 joules to two significant figures. Well, 2.4 times 10 to the 20 electron volts in joules means you've got to multiply the number of volts, yeah, in this case, 2.4 times 10 to the 20 by the electron charge, and that gives you 38.4 joules to three significant figures. So since 38.4 is greater than 30.2, yeah, it shows that a newspaper article was not that accurate. Now, it's not outside the ballpark. They're both around 30, between 30 and 40. But in fact, the energy of the cosmic ray particle is greater than the energy released by dropping a brick um, from your waist height. That's taking into consideration these estimates. So maybe if the brick was larger, then it would be a fair comparison. Anyway, they, they just want to see that you can, you know how to use uh, the conversion of energy. So that's a three mark question to start you off with the structured questions in section B. Question 12 is about electric fields. And uh, the diagram started by having a point charge in the middle. Yeah, a positive point charge. So the, the reason they, they're telling you it's positive point charge is because if you know you've got a positive point charge, then the field will be ra a radial field, yes. 
So they want you to know what a radial field is and they want you to draw field lines, yeah? To show the electric field around the charge, okay? So the charge is in the center there and you've got to draw at least four field lines, which I've drawn. You, they've got to be equally spaced, so don't do it in a messy way. Be neat. And arrows should be outwards because the convention with electric fields is to show the direction a positive charge would move in that field, a unit positive charge. They would move away because it is a positive point charge. So it would repel the unit positive point charge. And those three bullet points above is how you get three marks. Part B then says, um, part B then says, the, pos uh, the positive point charge is placed at P. So they're putting it over here, the charge that we just drawn the field for. And then a negative point charge is placed at Q here. Okay. So P and Q, one is negative, one is positive. And in between, they've drawn a point R. Yes. Now point R is just a point. It says R is four centimeters from P as shown and eight centimeters you can work out from Q. Yeah, what do they want you to do? They want you to calculate the magnitude of the electric field strength. If, if you were at R, yes, at R, calculate the magnitude of the field strength, um, the electric field strength at R, okay? So that's what we're looking at. So to work out the field strength, you've got to use the equation for field strength, yeah, which is E equals KQ over R squared, where K is the constant proportionality which is given to you in the data sheet, and it's equivalent to 104 pi epsilon naught. And then you have to add them. So you do it for P and you do it for Q, yeah? Uh, because the reason you add them is they're vector quantities. Now, since Q is negative and P is positive, if you were a point unit positive charge at position at R, so if you're at R, the negative charge will pull you this way and the positive charge will push you that way. So both of them are pulling to the right, okay? So first of all, using that equation, you work out the electric field strength due to uh, charge P, and K is given to you on a data sheet, it's 8.99 times 10 to the nine. They give you the, the units as well, but you don't need to worry about it because we just are working out the field strength. So you remember that you need to put the charge in the top, Q, and this is given to you as 14 times 10 to the minus nine, because it's nanocoulombs, you've got to convert it into standard form. So each one of them has the same charge, except one is negative and one is positive, yeah? And then you do uh, you divide it by the distance to f between P and R, which in this case is 4.0 times 10 to the minus two, if you change it into meters. So they've given it to you in centimeters, so you've got to change that into meters. All right, so that's a common uh, trick in exam questions that they want to see that you don't get tripped up by not changing the units. You then do the same again for Q, so that the K, the constant is the same, the charge is the same, except it's negative. Yes, I haven't bothered to put the negative in because uh, we know they're going to add up together. Yes, and this time the separation is eight centimeters. Again, you've got to square it, but you've got to make sure you've done it into meters first. So it's 8 times 10 to the minus 2. You then add these two vector quantities. And I've drawn arrows to show that it's vector addition. So the magnitude will be just adding the two field strengths together because both field directions will be to the right. Okay, And I think that's the simplest way of showing the examiner that you know they're both pulling towards the right. 
So, and then the magnitude, so see it's only asking for the magnitude. The magnitude will be 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. Because remember, whenever we're looking at field directions, it's a direction a unit positive charge would move. Yeah? It's the direction a unit positive charge would move if placed at that point. And the point we're talking about is point R. Okay? So I hope that makes sense. There's six more marks done in section B. So they, they start off with shorter questions. And then we're going to do question th 13 in this uh, part two as well. Okay, so part two is about particle interactions um, in the atmosphere. So these are what we call cosmic rays. So in some particle interactions in the atmosphere, muons are produced, okay, with speeds near the speed of light. Okay, so speeds near the speed of light, we call relativistic speeds. And this question is about understanding what relativistic speeds means. Now, muons normally have a lifetime, a typical lifetime of around 2.2 microseconds, so it's 10 to the minus 6, yeah, to three significant figures. And then here in part A, it says the muon is actually traveling at 98% to three significant figures, the speed of light. Now this, the fact that it's going at such high speeds, we say that's relativistic, yeah? And that means it will increase the lifetime. Because remember the twins paradox, if you travel very fast, time slows down relative to a particle that isn't traveling fast. So what you've got to do is show that the distance traveled, yeah, by the muon in 2.2 microseconds is about 650 meters, okay? So obviously you know that distance traveled is the velocity times time. We know the velocity is 98% the speed of light. The speed of light is given to you in the data sheet to three significant figures as 3.00. All data seems to be to three significant figures in this question. And uh, you multiply it by the time, which was 2.2 microseconds. So the microseconds is 10 to the minus six. Yeah, and that will give you to three significant figures, 647, yeah, which is approximately equal to what they asked us to prove, about 650 meters per second, if you're doing it to two significant figures. So you have got your two marks by doing that calculation and responding to the question, communicating it clearly. Remember, to get marks, you want depth, detail, and clarity. All right, the next part, the next part, it gives you some more information. Sorry, I've just taken a sip of tea to keep my voice lubricated. All right, so it says some muons are produced 15,000 meters above the ground and travel vertically downwards. In other words, they're not going at an angle, so they're going as fast as they can towards the Earth. Explain why, yeah, most of these muons reach the ground before decaying. Now remember, normally they would only last 2.2 microseconds, and we worked out if they're traveling at two, uh, if they're traveling at 98% uh, speed of light, at for 2.2 microseconds, that's about 650 meters per second. But now they're saying, um, sorry, 660. That should be meters. I just realized that was an error. Okay, that should be meters. See, I make a lot of er errors because I'm thinking while I'm talking and writing at the same time. Okay, now we did get the meters right here. So how could they reach the ground if they're 15,000 meters above the ground? That's what you've got to think of. Well, remember, this is relativistic speeds, so time is what we call dilated. So there's a time dilation, dilation factor. And if you want to learn more about it, you can research the Lorentz factor, which is Einstein's theory of special relativity. All right. 
So why would most of them reach the ground? You've got to give a, a, a plausible explanation. Well, as the speed of the muons is relativistic, in the case that we use, was 98% of the speed of light. The lifetimes that they um, live for, their lifetime will increase, yeah? So they will travel greater distances than what we calculated above using s equals vt. t will increase by this time dilation factor, yeah? Due to the relativistic effect, yes, that um, will allow them to travel much more than 650 meters. Well, I actually would try to look up how fast they would need to travel, and I don't think they would reach the ground at 98%. I think, I'm not sure because I didn't spend a long time on the calculations. I used um, a calculator on, the, uh, on a website where they did it for you because I didn't want to, I don't have a calculator at home. So the, what I calculated, well, this is the equation, the time dilation equation, yes? Uh, it'll be like that. So this time dilation equation, when you put in uh, V as 99.5% the speed of light, I think then it may reach the 15,000 meters. So would, I think it would be slightly more than 98%, okay? So you, that's the time dilation that we're talking about. So we've now just done three questions from section B. Yes, let's have a peek at question that, that follows uh, for the next video. The next question is a um, asterisk question, so it's about a capacitor, and we'll come back to that in the next section. So I've just done the second part. We've done 11, 12, and 13. I think that's about uh, another 15 marks or so. And if you found it useful, um, please share the video with your friends because the exam is next week and most people have done most of the older papers and this is the one where the mark scheme has just been released. So it will help you prepare for next week's exam and uh, show your appreciation by smashing that like uh, button. Okay, I notice a lot of people are watching the videos and not many people comment or um, show their appreciation and it really helps with getting the word out there and with the algorithms if more people do show a like and share it. We, I'm after uh, 1,000 subscribers as soon as possible. We're up to 730-ish, I think. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.